classic yet again. Um, I yeah, feel like your... I've seen more footage of his try than I've seen of anything else in this game. Because <laughs> I saw a few different fan videos of it as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's an alternative universe where London actually managed to beat Wakefield and Hull KR got sent down with a golden point loss to the same team twice. That, I know, that old... it would have been beautiful, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, we were just, actually just hoping that. that Danny Maguire would get his thousandth point to go, you know, um, say 1918 up, and then Josh Jones would crash over for the winning try to relegate them. <laughs> But no, um, other, other things uh, intervened and, and, it, and it wasn't to be. And in the end, it didn't. It, obviously, it didn't matter. But um, but yeah, the, 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 there's a level of irony about the actual final score there that um, that's that's not lost on me, to say the least. But yes, the whole KR survived, but you can't really say a lot more than that, can you? So, whole KR aren't the story now, are they? They they survived, no, like okay. say. Um, yeah. uh, Tony Smith winds on about relegation whilst I agree to a point on, his, on on what he says about relegation I think he can't really Saints didn't go to London to lose let's 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 put it that way um you know everyone has had moments in this season that could have gone either way because it's a it's a fucking long season 29 games but let's talk about Salford Allen because they're going into the playoffs what do you think a game like this where to be fair they didn't do they didn't strip away a team that are at the bottom of the league but they did win it what do you think a game like this does to set them up for some intense encounters ahead well they are stepping into slightly unknown territory for them aren't they um that has, that has two sides to it doesn't it they're not used to it they don't have the muscle memory that some other teams do um but they're also probably not worried about it in this way that some other teams are and they don't have the uh, the damage that's been caused by, you know, defeats in the playoffs Bottling. and that kind of stuff. What's that? Bottling. Bottling. They don't yes. have that. Yeah. They don't. They don't have the bottling, which, which was, you know, which, which for some teams it makes them is an of, issue. One of two sides in the playoffs that aren't bottlers, doesn't it? I suppose you could argue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think they, you know, they, they go into it. You could argue. In terms of form, they're the, they're probably in the second best quality form. Um, there's an argument to be at, made that they're they're up there. Um, the so they, they, they have no reason to fear anybody. They've won eight in a row. Yeah. They've won seven in a row. Saints have won six in a row. So. So yeah, literally. Yeah. <laughs> the second best in form. the league. Yeah. In the league, but yeah, but even just just in terms of just the way that it feels, it feels like they obviously the season's ended on a positive. Um, they're, they're good. well, you know, it helps to go into the playoffs on a, on a win, unlike two other teams. Um, they have they have no, you know, every you know, it's a bit of a cliche, but everything from here is a bonus for them, isn't it? And yeah. um, you know, if you know, going to Wigan or, or whatever, there's you know, they're not expected to win. There's no pressure on them really, so it could happen. <laughs> They, you know that they they they, they could uh, they could uh, show up a few people up in this uh, in this playoff format. Let's um, let's move on to the game that was the what the the game that headlined Friday the Thirteenth. Um, in actual fact, I think we'll all chip in on this one because it it was the game that focused everyone's took everyone's attention, didn't it? It was Wakefield versus London. Um, it was 8-0 to Wakefield at half time it finished 19-10 to Wakefield 6,230 were there to see it Robert Hicks was the referee um, again given the biggest game of the, of the week Robert Hicks so the RFL are unmoved on his status as the top official um, in terms of the stats the, the team stats have this game much more in the balance than the scoring did uh, really Wakefield had more metres but not loads more London had more breaks but just one more Wakefield made fewer errors, but just one fewer. And they also gave up more penalties, but just by one. The only big gap on the key stats we look at was tackle success, but it was actually London who won that by 4.9% uh, better tackle success. However, Wakefield won the game. Individually, Morgan Esquire continues to be 
a splashy, flashy player for this Wakefield Trinity side since his lone move. Um, one try assist, seven tackle balls, 127 metres, three successful offloads. Kalepi Tanganoa, who, if he'd come a month earlier, would be in Dream Team conversations. 175 metres. Ryan Atkins, 106 metres. And Reese Lane, one try and 100 metres. In terms of the losing London side, Eddie Batty, 131 metres and three successful offloads. Luke Yates, 58 tackles, 14 of which were marker tackles. Ryan Morgan, eight tackles, 129 metres, two clean breaks. And Reese Williams, 124 metres. Um, Sarah, do you want to start us off with Carsten's fan view? One second, yes. Carsten said, London with a shock at the worst time. Dixon with Dick Fingers and Lamb a really bad second half. Bruff with an excellent game. Sorry to see London go down. Uh, Matt Butler says, um, a step too far for London. Uh, they've given us more than anyone dared believe, but ultimately they had to have be squeaky clean in this game, in a game like this, and they weren't quite. I don't believe in trying to preserve their status because of their perceived strategic importance, but you still have to hope they can keep doing what they've done to get another go at the top table. Dr. Hideous said, Wakey out played us in tr- two crucial related areas. First, their tackle stopped us dead, so preventing us from making metres. Second, their kick chase was more effective at making the tackle immediately after the ball was caught, preventing us from making metres. No wonder they were about a million miles ahead. Crowther's haircut deserved a red card, <laughs> but apart from that, the ref had a good one. <laughs> Tom Andrews said, Well, Chester and Dixon both heard us one and totally delivered. Just seemed one game too far for the Broncos. Would have rather seen Huddersfield go down, but was in anyone but us mode today. Didn't believe we were safe until Chester was fighting off that drunk woman. Cheers, Wakey. <laughs> Always liked you. <laughs> uh, Bruiser664 says, uh, really disappointed from his ult, uh, but if you said at the start of the season that it would go down to the last game, I doubt anyone would have turned that down. Paul Chamberlain said, whilst the result was a disappointment, still a great evening with a decent band of London away supporters. Wakefield always looked too strong up front with the shelled try before half time and the failure to convert Morgan's second half break. The real nails in the coffin. At least Tony Smith has another 12 months to brush up some moans when Toronto send a side down and Daddy Bruff is still a prize prick. <laughs> Tim G says, it just wasn't to be for London. They'll rue the decision to attempt the two when they had momentum and could easily have got a try to change things. It will be interesting to see what squad, the, squad they can muster for next year. Also, wasn't 1910 the last year when Wakefield did any ground improvements? <laughs> No, a couple of years ago, they had to get all the fans in, didn't they, to uh, re-bolt down the stanchions? <laughs> uh, right, so, so what What did we all make of this? Um, I, I'll I'll start with me um, and say who I thought were the star players. Tanganoa and Bruff just were the best two players on the pitch throughout the whole piece, I think. And Tanganoa's power and Bruffy's composure... Um, to me were, were decisive in this game yeah, yeah. It, it feels like London just missed the key opportunities in this um, I think you know that there's definitely a claim we, we talked about Leeds mid-season signings I think Wakefield have done some fantastic mid-season business we talked about Escare, Tanganoa etc Um and we, we shouldn't really have doubted them, should we? Because Wakefield have got an unbelievable record. When when relegation's on the line and they're playing at home, they've got a perfect record. They always win. So we should have expected it. Um, another one of those mid-season season signings there is one that came from Hull, uh, Chris Green. Do you think he's been a difference maker for Wakefield? And are you sad to see him depart the Hull club, which was formally announced today, I think? Yeah, I mean, he went... He's only been there... Three weeks, I think. So I think he's played four matches. I think four matches, yeah. Okay, because he went just before we played them. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And didn't play against us. It's a funny one. I, I don't. He's a big lad who didn't always or didn't very often run his size. You see other players of his size who were breaking tackles, whereas he sort of stops on collision. So Yeah, and you, you, you've definitely said that before, and I've had that in mind when I've watched him play, and I think he's, I think he's had it in mind too, Sarah, because 
he has been a bit more forceful, I think, for Wakefield. I think he's been another one of them late season, season signings that's impressed. I, I think he's I taking admit, you with the heart. I've not seen him play for Wakefield. So I can't comment on if he's played differently. Yeah, of course. Um, okay, Brock Lamb is the next player to come to uh, in this game. I think he was very, very good against Hull KR. He made the right decisions. He pulled out the freak plays. He, he was huge in that game. I think he was the exact... I know he scored a try late on. I think he was the exact opposite in this game. I think he made really foolish mistakes. That break that um, was talked about in the fan reviews where all he had to do was go inside and he, he ran back to where the players that were quicker than him were to that would catch him and tackle him it it's there was a few things he did in that particularly in that first 20 minutes that second half when London might have just made it tasty that didn't go right did the Allen no and I think as I said it's it feels like there were they just they just made mistakes at the wrong time and, you know, missing kicks that they, you know, or, you know, taking kicks when they shouldn't have done or when they had the momentum and stuff like that. It just, it just didn't, it never felt like the kind of the, the mood music was positive for them, even yeah. from the first couple, kind of couple of minutes. Yeah. And I, I think there's something about individual performances there when, when you feel you're slightly under the pressure and under the pump, you know, pr- pressure can do funny things to players, and you know that they, they were. You know, it's it's a, it's a massive thing, and and Brockham's only relatively, you know, recently in, into the team, isn't he? So, it's it, it's a tricky position to to put to put somebody into. Expect him to to save you two weeks running, if you like. One of the one of the things that came out of this game was um, quite clearly what has now become the most open secret in, in rugby league, which is that Alex Walker apparently may be going to Wakefield next season. Um, the pressure thing you talked about, he scored a really nice try in this game, but it was after the game was lost. So he yeah. showed throughout the game his capabilities with not making errors, um, being really resolute in defence. And he scored that great try, so it's something for Wakefield fans to potentially be excited about next year if they don't get excited about Morgan Asqueray, um, if they keep him, so who knows. But Alex Walker is a, is a rising star of the game, and um, I, I don't think it'd be fair to go out of this review of that match without talking about him, because it got talked about a hell of a lot during the commentary that he might be playing for Wakefield next year. Um, I also can't move on without talking about Ben Jones-Bishop uh, doing his absolute best Ryan Atkins impression with one of the most ridiculous try claims of the year. He, how he didn't know that he'd knocked on before he then, uh, in the collision, in the impact in the air before he then grounded the ball, I do not know. Um, he should he should be embarrassed with himself for celebrating that try. Uh, I guess needs must when you're uh, when you're under pressure. But uh, there you go. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> We won't dwell too much on anything else with this game, but let's all just have our parting thoughts about London because we've all experienced London in various ways this year. Me and you, Sarah, we both didn't been down to games at, at London, and whilst it wasn't the result I wanted when I went down, it was one of the nicest trips of the year, I, w- I would say. Um, how do you feel about London leaving Super League at this stage, Sarah? Ultimately, they're the club that finished with the least points, so they should go down. I know that sounds really obvious, but I'm totally in favour of promotion and relegation. So therefore, because they finish bottom, then that's only right that they go down. Um, I mean, I do think that as a club, they're doing great things. And yes, you can say it would be nice for them to stay up and all the rest of it. And, you know, I genuinely did not want them to be the team that went down. I think, you know, you look at Danny Ward and what he's done with that squad, you look at just the squad as a hurl and you know it's definitely one of these that the the sum is greater than the individual parts yeah. um they just have such a heart for one another and for for the club and um yeah. i was listening to the owner after the rovers match talking and you know just even his passion for the club um is really nice i um, i think they do need to Work, do some development work with the ground if they're going to come back up to Super League and stay in Super League for any length of time but for the crowds that they're getting it's it's a nice little stadium 
um, like stewarding and everything is lovely. Sorry? The the stadium, it's a good point to pick up on the stadium. One of the crucial things that I was...